Is this the lowest emissions office building in the Northeast? Many of the videos I make on this channel are focused on how we can use low carbon technology to reduce emissions and to reduce costs at home. But over the last few years, my day job has been focused on developing strategy and then implementing strategy to do something similar for commercial buildings. So in this video, I'm gonna share a little bit about what I think is a best practice project from my old workplace that I hope will help demonstrate how commercial buildings around the country could significantly reduce emissions in response to climate change. This is Bolden House. It's a fairly normal office building on the edge of Durham City, and it's now home to a range of Durham University's professional services teams. It's got three floors, three stories. It's a 1980s construction, and until Durham University took ownership of the building, was being heated by gas boilers. But before the university moved in, the site had a major refurbishment, both to create a modern office space for staff at the university, and as part of that refurbishment, to give the building a path to net zero. And what they've achieved here makes me wonder, is this the lowest emissions office building in the Northeast? Well, before we get into the details, if you are interested in this kind of question, why not subscribe to my channel? Or maybe even better, head over to sb-energy.co.uk to find out more or sign up to my mailing list with the link below. Back to Bolden House. How should we approach decarbonizing this kind of building? Well, the high level answer is similar to the approach that we should take in decarbonizing homes. So first we get a step change in emissions, a reduction of at least two thirds by removing a gas boiler and replacing them with heat pumps to provide heating and hot water. I should say if we're near a heat network that's been developed, we could connect directly to that to get low carbon heat from somewhere else nearby. Next, we can reduce the amount of heat required and improve heat pump efficiency by upgrading a building's fabric. So upgrading glazing, upgrading roof insulation, upgrading doors. But the right question at that point is to ask how much insulation is enough? Next, we should provide fresh air through mechanical ventilation with heat recovery so that we're minimizing cold drafts whilst ensuring a pleasant environment for people working in a building. After that, we can support powering the building through filling a roof with solar panels. That helps power heat pumps, but also helps power the day-to-day -day use of a building. We can also reduce the electricity needed in the building by upgrading lighting to high efficiency LEDs. And finally, we can support staff getting to the building sustainably by installing cycle shelters and good shower facilities alongside subsidized electric vehicle charging. This stuff isn't really that complicated, is it? Well, I guess it kind of is, and it does need design engineers and architects to get a project like this right. We do need to size heating systems effectively. We need to size heat pumps effectively. To do so, we often need to analyze buildings carefully, often with dynamic thermal models to understand how a building might perform at different times of the year. And we need to coordinate internal building services with architectural design to avoid ugly pipe runs, to avoid noise, and to ensure comfort. There is a process to follow to refurbish buildings effectively and to decarbonize buildings sufficiently, but this approach to doing it well could be replicated in a range of situations. And I think this project at Bolden House is a really good example of decarbonization of commercial buildings. So what's the, the, the focus? The focus of, for commercial buildings should be on reducing fossil fuel use and ultimately removing fossil fuels altogether. That should be the priority. And this could be through installing heat pumps in a wet radiator circuit as the university did at Bolton House. It could be through the installation of an air conditioning system that provides heating and cooling. But either way, removing the fossil heat source gives us a path to net zero. There are other positive things we could do that could help us go in that direction, even if not reducing emissions completely. There would still be positive steps like improving air tightness and providing fresh air through mechanical ventilation with heat recovery again, just like what the university did, or through the upgrade of insulation to minimize heat loss, again, like at Bolden House, or through the installation of solar, solar panels, again, like the project here. These things would help, but if we leave a fossil fuel heating system in place, we risk keeping emissions high for the long term. So back to Bolden House. I, I didn't have the data for, for the building in use before the refurbishment. It had sat empty for several years. 
But when I compared this building to buildings with similar uses per square meter, I did have data for, it looks like this building uses less than half the energy of buildings with a similar use. So this means that the site has a path to net zero. It will continue to reduce emissions as the, grid, as the electricity grid decarbonizes, but also the improvement in systems and therefore the efficiency of the building means that it uses a, a lot less energy than similar buildings which means it's actually lower emissions today, even with emissions still on the electricity grid. And because it's using that much less energy, it's also cheaper to run than more modern buildings with similar usage. And this means that there's a business case in refurbishing buildings. There's a business case in decarbonizing buildings effectively. In cutting emissions, we're cutting costs at the same time. One thing to add specifically about Bolden House is that this was a building that was vacant. It was empty. It was going into disrepair and it was in need of a bit of love. It could have been knocked down and rebuilt with an even more efficient, modern new building, the right size and shape, purpose built for the university. A new building might have led to even lower emissions and potentially a better result. And this can seem really attractive to many leaders, many business leaders, but the more sustainable perspective might be what happened at Bolden House. It might be to do a building up. In refurbishing the building, we're valuing the energy and the carbon that has gone into constructing the building in the first place. The embodied carbon of the site, whether this is the energy and the emissions gone into manufacturing steel and concrete for a new structure that we didn't have to build, or the fuel and power gone into driving plant on a building site, or the transport of plant and materials to get to the site in the first place. In keeping the structure, in keeping the foundation as a substructure, and in refurbishing the building, we can prolong the life of a site, we can avoid significant emissions in demolition and reconstruction, and we can value the resources that have already gone into it. So from my perspective, Bolden House, this fairly normal looking office building, demonstrates the best practice in building refurbishment, in building decarbonisation, and it shows what's possible in achieving net zero. Lower cost to run, comfortable buildings with very, very low emissions. And this project does make me wonder whether Bolden House is one of the lowest emissions office buildings in the Northeast. I'll have to ask old friends and colleagues when they have been in the building for 12 months, what the emissions look like overall. Whatever happens, I think Bolden House is a great example of what could happen across the board in commercial and public sector buildings. So. The lessons we can learn from a project like this are the following. We can refurbish rather than rebuild. We should improve the fabric as any part of refurbishment. Any improvement is good. Progress is better than perfection, but our priority should be to replace gas heating with heat pumps or even air conditioning systems that provide heating as well as a level of cooling. We can power the building with solar PV on the roof or on the ground or in solar carports to reduce costs, and we should replace lighting to reduce demand, and organizations should support sustainable travel as part of any refurbishment. So those are six steps to decarbonize commercial buildings, and that sounds like a plan to me, and a plan that could be replicated elsewhere. So what do you think? Can you see other opportunities for similar refurbishments in your context? And if you wanted someone to help think through how you might approach a refurbishment like this, Get in touch with me to start a conversation by visiting sb-energy.co.uk to hear more, to book in a call, or to sign up to my mailing list. And then one final specific point, if you're in an organization that has heating and power from a combined heat and power unit or a CHP, you may find this video on CHPs interesting.